Hell yeah. Well, welcome to Sass Daily Podcast. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, we got a special guest co-host tonight, Malcolm, here on the Line Before Podcast. Uh, Houston uh, is working and stuff. And uh, we got Malcolm as the guest co-host tonight. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing great, and it's glad to be here. And I just can't wait to get some questions in and hear some good music. Yes, sir, man. Dustin, how are you doing tonight, on, man? Oh, yeah, we're blessed enough to have a guest, a very special guest, one of my favorite country singers, Dustin Collins. How are you doing tonight, man? Nah, I'm hanging in there, man. Just uh, living the dream. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one of my favorite songs by well, my favorite song by you is Cold Dead Hands. And tell me how that song was made and stuff. Ah, uh, man, I, uh, I'm from Nelson County, Kentucky. It's a uh, central Kentucky. So, you know, guns and firearms have been a part of my life since I was a kid. And uh, uh, it started off kind of as a joke with a bunch of buddies of mine. We, you know, that old NRA, uh, Charlton Heston, from my cold dead hands thing. And I was like, that'd be a great <laughs> hook in a song. And uh, I just sat down one day and uh, wrote it out. And um, I had a couple of people cut the thing and, and they put their own spin on it. And then we uh, we eventually got around to, to putting our, our version out of it. And it, it just went, uh, you know, went nuts for us. And Anytime I get to sing about something I really believe in, I, I, I feel like those make the best songs. Yeah. Also, one of my favorite songs by you is I Like to Drink, man. That is a, that's a good song to go boating on. <laughs> Again, whenever I'm singing about stuff I believe in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, seem, they seem to go over a little better. <laughs> So now out of curiosity, when it comes to uh, like your uh, your more playful pieces versus anything more serious, do you find that the the writing process is is different in any way? Like because I know some people that usually start with the 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 musical verse of it. Some people start with the lyrics and then try to take a, a, the music to the lyrics. So I just I'm interested in everybody's creative processes. Yeah, man, it's it's like I don't know some some like some of the really good songs I've wrote all came out in like fifteen minutes just for like uh, I, I usually always start with a hook just from uh, playing in Nashville and writing with a lot of guys down there. It's you know the hook is key, so you try to write around the hook, and and I've got some songs like on my new record that I've been writing for ten years, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> You know, they, they get rewrote, wrote again, you know, trashed, hate that song, throw it in the garbage, get it back out. I'm like, ah, oh, it's not, you know, completely wasted time. But like, <laughs> I like to, I like to drink, man. That song was completely about my buddies. And again, it's the best one started as kind of a joke. And I was down there on the boat and uh, basically just talking shit about everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know in, in song form just coming up with random crap and just singing about them and everybody was laughing they were like man you should you should write a song you know oh, yeah. with all this in it and i was like man that would be stupid and then i got home and and i heard i heard a couple i'm not gonna name the song but it was at the top of the charts and i thought i was like this is the dumbest piece of crap song i've ever heard and it just started breaking records and uh, I said, well, I guess I'm going to write this stupid song, you know, the stupidest, most corny, cheesy song I could write. Well, and I mean, that the, leads you to, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, by the time I got it done, I, I was with I Like to Drink, and then it kind of grew on me after that. I thought it was hilarious. And I let a couple people hear it, and they were like, you have got to record that. And I was like, I knew it. I said, if I write the dumbest thing possible, everybody's going to love it. <laughs> it is a good song, man. Also, no, turned turn into a big hit for us. Everybody likes it. I mean, they they show up to the shows. They want to hear "I Like to Drink" cold dead hands. So, <laughs> yeah, and bonfire <laughs> as well with Coke Ford. Oh yeah, man! I, I that that was a cool song that that uh, originally uh, wasn't had no intention of having Colt on there. And and when we were with Average Joe's, we sent it over and asked him if he would do a couple bars on it. And he was like, "Yeah, I sent it back." And I was like, "Oh, well, that's neat." <laughs> So that was, you know, completely unexpected and really cool that he did that for us. Uh, briefly touching on your earlier point, it it makes one think how uh, how much music we wouldn't have 
if somebody didn't write songs about, you know, the stupid, you know, times hanging out with their friends and stuff like that, I could tell you a number of Irish and Scottish drinking songs that we wouldn't have if we didn't follow that process. So keep doing it. Yeah, man, I, I feel like the best, the best music is derived from real life stuff. And I mean, that's, mm -hmm. so, you know, that's country music and, and, and like I say, if you're not writing about your real life and, and what you're doing in life, you know, you're not gonna make really good country songs. Yeah. You know, you're just going to make, you know, a beat with, uh, you know, some of the more obviously bad songs you've heard on the radio. Yeah. Who was your biggest inspiration and in, not just in music, but just in life? And you, it could be in music as well. You know, my dad and my uncle, man, were, uh, my uncle uh, just passed this past week and he was a big, big influence to me in, in playing music and, and just in life, the, those two guys, you know, made me who I am and, and it made me really think about all my music and what I'm doing and, and really, you know, getting back after it with, with my new album and really trying to take it as far as we can. And, and I always really appreciate those guys for that. Yeah. Uh, so how old were you when you had first started playing? Man, I started playing guitar when I was about 10 or 11. Nice. I'm 33 now, so it's, uh, <laughs> I've been, I've been Many able to um, playing professionally. I'd say, uh, 2013 is when we released the first song. So, nice. uh, it's, it's been a long time of, of <laughs> packing crap into a van and, and, you know, taking this thing on the road. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I mean, uh, oh, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> this no, 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 you're it's good. Hard to hear. <laughs> it's hard to hear through the Zoom thing. I should have, but I have a headset. It's even worse than hearing through the normal computer. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I usually have all my speakers and, and microphones set up, but they're all in the car. <laughs> so, <laughs> but go ahead, Malcolm. I'm sorry about that. No, no, no. You're good. Um, but. Speaking of those moments where, you know, packing crap into a van and then shuffling to, to who knows where, um, yes, the, the, the journey to get there kind of sucks, but, you know, you have the moments of, of being on stage, performing for everybody and, and just getting that, that just rush of adrenaline and, and just good vibes coming from everything. Uh, certainly there, um, there was going to be a question in there somewhere, but mostly it just turned into, but yeah, concerts are awesome. Yes, concerts are awesome. And it, I, I think kind of where you're getting at, you know, that the 10 hours it takes to get to a, get to a gig and sound check and, you yeah. know, do all, do all the hard work to allow you to get up and be those silly, you know, silly hillbillies with guitars for, you know, an hour and a half, <laughs> two hours a day. Um, you know, you got to learn to enjoy the whole ride, you know. Uh, yeah. We have a list of our favorite gas station food. <laughs> or, or uh, you know, restaurants you can't see anywhere at like Casey's you know if you go to yeah. Midwest you get Casey's okay, uh, okay. Sheets out in West Virginia <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah shout out to Sheets man I man, went Sheets to, is fire if you ain't had a yeah. Sheets burrito with the tater top stuff down in the middle of it you just ain't living right <laughs> <laughs> it's good man going on back well, looks like I have a new uh looks like I have something new to add to my Xbox achievement of life list now Yes, I, 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 I ate it sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, gas station food. We we all laugh about that stuff, and and I don't know, getting hang out with my band. We even make the best out of the car. I think we went to Branson uh, and played a run of shows out there, and we listened to Steel Panther for eight hours solid. Nice. <laughs> and <laughs> i've never thought we'd get we listened to every song that they've ever played twice and i was like man they have a lot of music and um now now seal panthers are uh our, our band our band's band <laughs> so uh the thing that is interesting is i have a background in technical theater as well as you know for both concerts and and more you know streamlined theater you know like music man and wizard of oz that sort of sort of stuff but it's interesting to think about things from the technical perspective because that's something that almost nobody sees uh, whenever they go and see a show of any variety and sort. 
So it, it's it's really interesting to hear this perspective from my opinion uh, about, you know, the load in, load out process, traveling to and from the destination, the difficult, you know, like the, the tire breaks down on the van and stuff like that. Every uh, freaking run. <laughs> So I, I was curious if you had a, every run we've ever been on. Well, uh, now out of curiosity, is there a, an interesting story? Maybe not necessarily of a blowing tire, but just you know, like a, a a road story where just something potentially crazy or nefarious or or just you know absolutely wild happened that you feel comfortable telling. <laughs> well, yeah. Keywords <laughs> um, feel comfortable telling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Man, one of the first runs we did, uh, we were going on back in the day. We were we did um, this little place called uh, Sidewinders, Sidewinders in Roanoke, Virginia, and uh, I think the next town was um, can't remember the 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 venue, but we were uh, Carolina Nightlife was the name of that place, and uh, and it was in oh they have the racetrack there in uh, South Carolina. Darlington okay and uh we we ended up getting to the venue way early and uh so we were gonna try to get another tire for the van because okay I plugged it and aired it back up because we had a flat tire and this is like the plague of the flat tire since I started playing music if we go anywhere we get a flat tire and it's just Ooh. this is like five or six years of getting a flat tire every time we go there <laughs> Oh wow! And, uh, this I think this is what started it, and uh, my bass player we did he didn't unload the trailer. We unloaded all the gear out of the trailer, and I told him to just unload the trailer. I was like, "Man, let's just unload the trailer. We'll leave it here. We'll watch it." He was gonna run and try to go get us another tire. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't listen. He was like, "Oh, I'll just drive it. It's fine." So he hit railroad tracks too hard, and the trailer came off the truck, and he oh. said he seen it rolling down the road, and it was his truck, so I didn't care. <laughs> he <laughs> he ran the trailer down, and he, like, kind of nudged it with his truck to get it to stop. And uh, finally got the trailer back on. He got back, and he was just out of breath, and he was like, you won't believe what happened. And, you know, that that's one of the crazier things that, that's happened to us while we were out on the road. Nice. And uh, some of the hotels. Some of the hotels you book, you know, on the cheaper side, whenever you're out rolling – it's it's never a good surprise to show <laughs> to a day's in and say Tampa, Florida, one star Yelp review to the day's in in Tampa, Florida. Fair uh, enough. And it looked like somebody was murdered in the bathroom. You know, everybody's just kind of sitting on the beds like we really don't want to sleep in here. <laughs> so we we just kind of jumped in the uh, rent a car there and drove to the next show in Fort Myers and <laughs> was done with that place. Fair. <laughs> wow. I can only imagine some of the 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 more interesting, well, not interesting things that you've seen. So, uh. oh yeah. <laughs> so another cool road story. We played an Amish field party in Sedoris, Illinois. Okay. I had no idea what was going on. They booked it as a charity rodeo thing, and we get up there, and uh, it's like all these kids like on Rumspringa. <laughs> I had no idea they were Amish until you talked to them. And then they're like speaking Pennsylvania Dutch. And I yeah. asked the guy that was running sound at this thing. Cause I was like, are these kids Amish? He said, yeah, a lot of them. And I was like, how did they hear my music? <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't know how, the, how they even figured out to, to get, you know, get me at the show, but a lot of them knew the words to my songs and stuff. And I was like, Wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, how do these Amish kids, you know, know, know the words to uh, Cold Dead Hands? Wait, did they sing All Out to Drink? No, it wasn't, it wasn't out, but that, that song wasn't out. This, this has been a couple of years uh, ago. I was about to say that would be interesting. <laughs> to be able, uh, sing no, they were drinking, man. They were throwing down. Uh, that's <laughs> the first time I ever seen anybody drink pickle juice moonshine. And that was like a huge thing. And they were oh. like, oh, some of this pickle juice moonshine. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Oh God! Now, now an old Smokey makes it, so I guess they started a thing. I don't know. Hey Malcolm, as a performer at uh, you performed at Broken Throne, right? 
And hopefully yeah. uh, Jamie uh, sees this and books Dustin because that would be a great show for Broken Throne Brewing. Oh, dude, that would be fabulous. That would be an excellent show. Um, they they have usually very, very good crowds. They just started selling food there. They, it's a great, great place. It's right across from the arena. And um, it, it's a really, really great place to, to kind of put one's foot in the door in Pikeville, I would imagine. Oh uh, yeah, man. We we plan on getting out to, out that way. So I'd I'd love to come do anything. Yeah, I told her sure. to uh, get up with you because man, uh, everybody that I've showed your music to, I show I do research on people's music before I interview them, and everybody has loved your songs, especially Cold Dead Hands and I Like to Drink. I think a lot of people in Eastern Kentucky like the song I Like to Drink. Man, I had no idea how big that thing was going to get. I, I figured we'd go do that little video and we get, you know, some views and stuff on it. But there was no way to know that it was just going to explode like that. And I was like, there's people in like Wisconsin be like, I like to drink, man. I'm like, what? <laughs> so it's, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that song. And, and um, as far as Eastern Kentucky goes, I really wanted to get up to breath it this weekend, but um I will get some Eastern Kentucky. Uh, a bunch of guys I know are from Sayersville and Paintsville and, and places like that. So we will definitely get out there and, and uh, oh, yeah. start playing out the Eastern Kentucky fan base a little bit more. If people want to book you, what's your email for people can book you? Management at DustinCollinsMusic.com. And your Facebook page will be in the description. I'll put your YouTube in the description as well. All right, yeah, uh, that management, you're hit or miss, whether you get me or, or whether you get somebody uh, from from the management office. And either either way, the show will get booked. <laughs> yeah, and definitely uh, Broken Throne Brewing should definitely have you. I know uh, that she said that she will probably book you in the future and stuff. Absolutely, man. Uh, we got some She's cool my cousin. <laughs> we got some uh, cool shows coming up, too, man, that uh, – um if, if you can get out to central kentucky man we're, we've got two real big uh kind of closer to home shows uh for me that i've not got to do in, in years past because we're either you know playing down tennessee or alabama or, or you know trying to get the word out and we're uh you know covid ending we're kind of getting right back into uh trying to get that hometown fan base back riled up about new music so uh we're, we're playing the, you know, first bigger shows we've, we've ever played out here. So, uh, hopefully we can get some folks out to those. Now I'm just curious. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how the, how the industry works when they promote you and, and, and this and that, um, how much, um, let me see if I, I can word this correctly, but, um, how much sway does your uh, the, uh, the 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 company that you're the label that you're signed to or, or whomever? How much sway do they have in being like, hey, you should go over over here and play? They they might like you over here. I'm just like, but I, but I, I want to play over here because I'm from here and people know me here. But like, yeah, but they know your music over there too. As you know, like with instance the the Amish party. Well, that's, sounds amazing. By the, the, way. The, the way all that works, man, is it's all. Um, we, we have ways of, of looking at who's listening to what, whether it be Spotify, mm -hmm. Apple Music, uh, Pandora, my actual sales, the physical sales from our website. Everything breaks down and we can see the cities and the towns and stuff that people are most active in listening. Uh, so we, we go in and look at that. And, and when we're touring or, or trying to organize a tour, we, we very much try to stay with the people that, you know, like our music and try to expand that market as much as we can. And then mm -hmm. because if it starts taking off, say, Chicago, Chicago is one of our biggest markets, which is real strange to me being, you know, it's like the most gun controlled city in the world. And they like cold dead hands. Yeah. And if that you think is that interesting it's situation. probably not that big a stretch for them, you know, and uh, yeah. so stuff, you know, stuff like that. Um, we just go in and look at those markets and say, okay, well, how can we make this all work in a circle or, you know, how do we get to point A to point B and make it all make economic sense? You know, cause at the end of the day, it's go. still a business where this is our jobs. We're out trying to make money doing this selling records and t-shirts and stuff. So, nice. you know, it's all about making that route work and uh, making sure that we can get to these places economically without, you know, 
blowing the show pay on on gas so like we can't just drive out to chicago so it'd be cool you know yeah. we start out in nashville hit a show in louisville or bardstown or, or lexington roll up hit ohio or indiana and that gives us kind of a route to go around and and you okay. know hit a three or four day run so uh now this is just m- a niche question probably but where would you say is um aside from from the amish field party that you mentioned previously but where would you say is the probably one of the strangest places that you've performed and had and and uh, or was surprised by the reception that that you got after performing Mm -mm. biker wake man Ooh, okay i'm not familiar with this tell me more uh, it's a funeral. It was super sad. And they booked our band to play it. And I was like, I guess, you know, and, and I felt real weird. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about an event, an actual wake. Wow. Yeah, it was, okay, it was sorry. actually somebody had passed and they had booked our band for it. And, and they were having like a wake party. It was supposed to be like some kind of party or something. And uh, I mean, wow. everybody was really cool and really nice, but we like played Leonard Skinner for two hours straight. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, was, I was like, I don't know what else to play. So, I mean, we we, <laughs> we played it. Uh, but the craziest one, I, saying that, now I'm thinking of another crazy one. When I first moved to Nashville, we were I was hungry for gigs. You know what I mean? I just uh, yeah. I would play anywhere. And I got this email from this lady. And they were like, we're having this uh, this thing. We'd really like to book you for some entertainment. It was like 400 bucks. So 400 bucks in Nashville is that's big right. freaking money. I mean, cause everybody's working yeah. for tips and I oh, didn't yeah. even think about it. So I get the band together and I'm like, let's go play this thing. They give me the address and it's the church of Scientology. <laughs> and I, I just, I looked at everybody and I just, we just turned the band around and then we left and I was like, man, <laughs> They, they were getting us to play a Scientology event. And I was like, yeah, we're not going to do this. So I was like, my grandma would trip out. <laughs> like, so, yeah, we, we turned around and we just let that one go. Well, I mean, I don't know you, why they're you, paying so much. <laughs> you you might have missed out on a chance to meet Tom Cruise, but, you know, we can only hope. I, was to get my, I wasn't trying to get my feet and levels read. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that music puts you in weird places, though, man. It really does. So, and uh, yes, yes, it does. Uh, I, I have my own experience with that. Uh, I used to do theater in, a, in Elkhorn, and they have foreign exchange play, uh, students from like Central and Southern Africa. So, there are two pictures of me in like, you know, the the cowardly lion outfit from wizard of oz <laughs> with surrounded by a group of foreign exchange students and and that picture is now circulating somewhere around central africa right now and i'm just like and i can only imagine the stories that they have told about this oh yeah i'm sure i mean that's so we we go play in belize and that's another crazy place for you know we go play country music in a caribbean country you know they're not accustomed to country music and uh the only songs they really know down there are like uh carrie underwood so if you go to their jukebox down there you get on the jukebox they have brad paisley and carrie underwood and we've been trying to make a dent i think this is our fifth or sixth time going down there and playing and now uh on their sunday on their sunday broadcast they play one of my music videos on there i think it's i like to drink so now i'm like one of the only country artists in the entire country of belize that they they kind of know who they are oh is that where your biggest fan base is from another country i actually know uh uh, the uk uh right now is is probably our biggest and then australia is coming in there uh they like i like to drink a lot too (laughs) i say so so. (laughs) but uh, i had a mullet forever too and a lot of australians have mullets so um Shout out to Australia. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know how. I have no idea how these uh, algorithms work, like on Spotify and Apple Music. I just see them pop so, up. So. I'm like, how are these people hearing these songs? And you know, you wouldn't think people in Australia would. Uh, I guess they do the same thing we do. We we just kind of sit on boats and get drunk. So apparently, they do that there too. <laughs> they love country music, man. Australia is probably the second biggest uh, country music market country-wise besides America. 
Yeah, can, hmm. Canada's coming in there hard too. Uh, I mean, we we got some presence in Canada, but I mean, the UK and uh, Australia, and I think that's because a lot of our music is more rock and roll driven, a lot of guitar solos and stuff like that. And yep. I, I think uh, uh, Europeans and Australians and stuff really dig into that rock and roll kind of ACDC vibe of stuff. So actually, this is a question for both of you guys. After, because uh, both of you guys perform, and after you after the pandemic, your first performance, what was it like performing the first time after the pandemic? That's a question for both of you guys. Ah, nervous wreck, man. Uh, the band hadn't played in probably three months uh, since March, and uh, we we booked a private party up in uh, Ohio, and they still wasn't under a uh, hard lockdown. And uh, we went up there and played, and you know they they did a great do- job at this private party, put up big production and a big stage on the back of a hay trailer, and it was you know we went up there and I, I, the first three or four songs I was just rusty. And then not used to, you know, people being around and, 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 you know, everybody had their mask on and stuff, but, you know, everybody was kind of, that was in like groups for three or four here and there throughout listening and nobody was, it, it was just real, real strange. And then our, our first rock and roll show back, man, we, uh, out there at uh, Flemingsburg and Hoedown in the Holler, and, you know, that was the first time I seen a crowd over a thousand people in, in a long time. And, and we just, uh, we came out swinging that night. I think I was more pumped up than anything. Yeah, uh, same here. I was uh, a a nervous wreck when the first, uh, because as soon as stage lights hit you, you're just like, geez, did it just get 10 degrees hotter? Because it did. And um, so like, uh, and then I'm I'm also kind of a a bigger guy and I enjoy my thicker flannel shirts. So I'm just like dripping sweat. And then like, I I would mix verses up in the wrong place. I I forgot words. So I had to, to mismatch and, and, hodgepodge lyrics here and there and it was i I felt bad for the band uh and having butchered the weight but you know i was just so happy to be performing that i was just like music people human contact god yeah exactly man it's uh, that's exactly how i felt and i get the sweating about the flannel shirts man god no yeah um there are a few there are a number of local bands around here that uh i'm going to start imitating some of the the guys in there they they just keep constant sweat rags multiples of them and i'm just like yep it's that's that the best time. thing you can do you need that's in my rider all the time from any venue that, that we are fortunate enough to have a rider at i said look I, I just need a bag full of rags and a lot of water there you go <laughs> now have have you ever come go ahead will no you go ahead man sorry about that no no you're good i uh i have always been curious about you know interesting requests that people have in their writers so i was uh curious if if either of you have ever come across anything that you're just like that's kind of a weird request yeah not really for me um I mean, the old joke, you know, 100 M&Ms. <laughs> yeah. 100 yeah. brown M&Ms, but uh, not, I mean, out of us, man, the, the most thing, I think Corey Smith had a weird one, and it wasn't weird. I mean, he, he wanted like two loaves of bread and, and some peanut butter or something like that. <laughs> like, I, I think okay. the dude wanted some peanut butter sandwiches and like the, <laughs> and he out, got him some peanut butter and, and bread and stuff and brought it to him. But we're mostly, you know, if I see catering in in the in the contract from the venue, I'm like, whoa, big, you know, this is rock star moment. We're getting McDonald's, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you get a Fair. Subway sandwich out of them, you know that you've hit the big time. Yeah, what would you give? What would be the advice you'd give to somebody to start and to put out like record music and stuff in the studio? Right every single day write as much as you can write with as many people as you can um play your songs play them until people tell you to quit it and play them again after that you know just keep playing your stuff uh there's nothing wrong with being in a cover band but it, if you you're trying to go down this road it's a whole different animal of of trying to put your your stuff out and and staying true to that even in your shows 
every cover song you got to pick has to support your songs in the set list to build your songs up to try to build that brand and, and try to make sure that what you're putting out is the best that you can and writing you know is the most important part of that you know a lot of guys in nashville can go to a publishing company and get you know a couple a songs from a writers but you know when you're starting out none of those a writers are going to want to give you anything you know because you have no track record of success and and that's how they make their money so you, you can't be surprised when you get down to town and, and and you know you're with a producer and you're paying to do this record or whatever and you're like i don't have any original music so you're at the mercy of whatever you know b or c catalog that gets open to you from from a producer and have to shuffle through songs that you're not about and just to get your name out there so the most important part of it to me is, is writing your own stuff and being happy with what you're writing because you know there's a lot of times i wrote songs i wasn't real happy with and, and did them anyways and now they're stuck in my set list and can't get rid of them because you know that might be somebody else's favorite song you know and if you get somebody that shows up to your show and they request one of your songs you better play it no matter if you played yeah. it a hundred thousand times and it's garbage <laughs> we actually got a special treat for uh the viewers and it's definitely gonna be a special treat for me and malcolm as well man it's an honor to have you play for us man and for my viewers man it's an honor for real all right, yeah, man, we'll get to that. This is, uh, let's see, hold on. Y'all hear it all right? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. All right, this is a song that started everything, I guess. Uh, we, uh, a song I, I wrote called Cold Dead Hands. Uh, if you don't like, if you don't like it, it's not your fault. Uh, you just, uh, you gotta learn to like it. <laughs> There's a rifle in my closet, made in 1893. Carved on a barrel lift says Winchester Company. It's been passed for generations, and I've been taught to use it well. Just put food there on the table And it ain't never been for sale There's people on my TV Telling me what's right from wrong But not one day I'm gonna mind Just ever pull the trigger on its own From my cold dead hands It's about you and me Ain't no redneck thing Why don't you understand You can bitch and moan you yeah, you get my gun from my cold dead hands. There's an amendment to a paper up in Washington, D.C. Ratified and voted on by folks like you and me. We just make it through the ages and guarantee this country free. You can bet your bottom daughter that it ain't ending here with me. From my cold dead hands, it's about you and me. Ain't no redneck thing. Why don't you understand? You can bitch and moan all you want. Yeah, you get my gun from my cold dead hands. There y'all go. Wow, man. Hell yeah. Uh, y'all want to do one more? Or is, uh, you want you want to play a lot to drink? Yeah, well, we, we was talking about it, so might as well do it. <laughs> hey, man, that was a great performance. Well, I might like a bush light on a Saturday at noon. Sitting on this boat, dog drunk, well, it sure ain't hurting you. Well, I might take a trip and never leave the farm. When the big red sun starts sinking, low, break out the bottles and the guitar. Cause I like to drink, I like to flow. Grab a rap, blow it up tight, tight, and throw it out a little rope. Well, I mean, well, I'm just wild as hell, ain't no fool 
Performing, man, that was a oh. hell of a, that was a hell of a performance. Oh, appreciate it y'all, really man. Was. Thank y'all for, so much for having me. Yeah, man, this has been uh, the Line Before Podcast, Seth's Daily Podcast. I want to thank uh, Dustin Collins for being on; he was an amazing guest. And I want to thank Malcolm Johnson for co-hosting. And you guys have a good night and uh, God bless. <laughs>